Hello and welcome to Profiles with Paulette Payne. I am your host, Paulette Payne. Um, thank you guys for watching tonight. Uh, we have a wonderful show in store. I was just chatting with um, Michelle and Sean in the virtual green room, and we were talking about all things family and business and COVID-19, and I'm, I'm just so excited to introduce them to you. Uh, but first, I just want to do a little housekeeping, if you will. If this is your first time joining me on Profiles, I uh, just want to let you know a little history behind the show. Um, this is the virtual iteration of uh, an in-studio taping I did eight years ago, and it's a continuation of projects that I did at the beginning of this whole pandemic. You know, we always want to know how can we help, how can we uh, lend our support, and that for me came in the form of doing a four-part series around COVID-19. Follow that up in May uh, with the murder of George Floyd. I was inspired to create a four-part series that addressed uh, police brutality and systemic racism in America. And that's when uh, Profiles with Paulette Payne was relaunched, relaunched in the virtual format. So I'm excited about it. I'm grateful that you are here and that you're supporting and sharing and commenting and all those great things. So thank you so much. Um, wanted to let you know uh, before we finish tonight, please, please share the broadcast, comment, leave your questions. We will do our very best to address them. Um, I've asked Sean and Michelle, well, I didn't really ask them, but I'm asking them now <laughs> if they'll just hang out for a bit just in case we miss some questions and they can address them. Uh, my goal for profiles is that you walk away informed one. I want you to be informed. Two, inspired because I have some amazing guests that I'll be sharing with you and empowered knowing that you can do the thing that's in your heart to do. Um, so with that, we will go on and introduce you to Sean and Michelle Clark, the dynamic double Dutch duo. Hello, Hello. Sean and Michelle, how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> make sure my baby get inside. Well, you, you, you in frame? Yeah, okay, friends. she's in frame. I got to make sure my baby good. <laughs> See, that's why I love y'all, because you have his back and she has your back. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Oh, well, look, I wanted Sean, uh, Michelle and I were just chatting briefly before we went live just about how this whole pandemic has affected me. I shared with her, it's the great equalizer if we see it as such. No matter how you feel it's a hoax or not, it's still present and it's still taking people that we love. So just want to talk to you about how this is impacting you all. How are y'all doing? I mean... What? what yeah. I it's, 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 I guess it's two, it's, it's two ways. It's two so, ways. So you go, and I, I guess I'll go. So, yeah. So, yeah. The the down, of course, about COVID is that, you know, we lost someone very close to us um, in New York. A lot of our friends have actually had COVID. Um, it's also, we've lost tons of work during COVID. Everything was shut down. So we're a fitness brand. Right. And so, of course, when, when they shut the city down, that shut everything down. Well, they shut the whole world the down. The whole world down. So all of our traveling gigs. And we had just booked, like we had literally, the bookings were coming in. Mm -hmm. So we had um, we had all these hopes for the summertime, our certification weekend. And we haven't done one in three years. Well, two years. Because we had Sean Jr. the first year. We haven't done a certification weekend in two years. That was shut down. Mm -hmm. So it was just like a real punch in the gut. Yeah. Um, of course, we were, we were very grateful because we didn't get sick. Our children are still healthy. Mm -hmm. um, That's you know, part. yeah, our, our family is still um, healthy. So we had to be grateful for all of that because there are people who are literally losing their lives. Yes. So when you think about it that way, all the all the stuff we just mentioned can be fixed. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or money can be made. Or when you're a winner, it, you win. I think you know it, what I mean? I think so figure it out. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. imagine. But I, I think it just kind of changed my whole perspective. I think I think this pandemic kind of made everyone kind of reprioritize their lives as far as what's important and what's not. And I think that's one of the benefits that that's one of the benefits I actually got out of it. I, you know, the, with the world shutting down, you have so much time to yourself to reflect mm -hmm. and like adjust. You know, um, because this. This, we've never experienced this in our lives. Um, but then also some good things came out of it. You know, I, I started investing in the stock market. You know, I learned a lot about the stock market. Um, you know, I, I have relationships with people that I haven't spoken to in years. 
Um, we started talking again. So those, those are some of the good things that are happening. And of course, we have we have a surprise that we're going to reveal on yeah. Tuesday, which is another thing. That happened because of COVID. Mm-hmm. A good thing. Uh, that, that happened because of COVID. And so there, there are some positive things that are happening. And so that's what that's what I try to do. Like That's my personality. I always have to try to focus on the positive because this COVID, this COVID, this this whole pandemic could send you into a depression, yes. a deep depression. Mm-hmm. You know, so you know, I started taking care of myself. You know, I listen to inspirational speakers every day. I listen to my my boy Jonathan McReynolds every day. Yes, that's my guy. Yeah. Um, get my spiritual, you know, connection going. Yeah, and I, you know, I listen to my Tony Robbins. Get my financial and. Something I did, which I told you I felt like, and I had moments where I would just cry and be like, I think I'm tripping out. Like, I know, yes, I think I'm tripping out. Yes. And so I had to decide to do something. And so I started, um, I joined a group, we did an abundance meditation together. Um, I started reading my book over, write it down, make it happen. I had to be active about making sure I don't slip in the sadness of this all because. I am grateful for the things that I have, and I don't want to dismiss that because everything is going on. Mm-hmm. So I had to really decide right. to do something right. instead of just letting it, you know what I mean, letting it beat me up. And then, and then um, go on, go on. Go ahead. It's just so important for us to make that decision because, you know, not just in COVID, just in life, period. Uh, a lot of times we allow the circumstances to, to keep us still and paralyze us. But it's when we move, when we break through that fear or break through that doubt or whatever the case may be, we find out that so many other blessings are on the other side of that, you know? And it's, it, and it's a very unfortunate time right now. It's a very sad time because of, you know, circumstances, but there are blessings in it. Yes, that. definitely are. And you know, you know what else I found out? What's that? How much I love my wife. Because oh. <laughs> we, we didn't do nothing. Look, making me blush. <laughs> we didn't do nothing but spend twenty four hours, yeah, seven days a week. I mean, we normally do that, but we'd have some place to go. Right. But we stayed. We were home for months. And oddly enough, we're not getting any sleep. Right. Because the kids don't care about our sleep. They don't. So it's not like we get extra they don't care. sleep. Mm-hmm. We're we're trapped in a house with a two and a three. Love hammers, and, and they gangster sometimes. <laughs> you know what I mean? so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's- well, it's interesting. Sean, you were you were talking about uh, how you guys are an aerobics uh, business. So, how did you guys get started in Double Jet Dutch? Tell us, you know, from the beginning, the middle, and the end. How did you wind up here, and not wind up in a bad way because you guys? Are <laughs> well, Michelle actually tells the story very, very well. Uh-huh. Yes, because uh-huh. I, I like I like her to start it off, and then I'll, I'll, I'm gonna jump in. Is that okay? That's okay. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you know, in and out. <laughs> Don't get me started. Don't get me started. I can go all day. So, <laughs> so um, I, I went to acting school. I was a theater major, and when I graduated, I was teaching fitness as I was auditioning mm-hmm. and acting, and um, I had this idea because um, yeah, I was teaching spin class, and I used to see little girls on the street jumping, but I would feel really weird asking kids, could I get a jump? Because it's like, I'm a grown man. <laughs> and it Wait, felt, oh, oh, can't curse, sorry. I'm know. a grown man. <laughs> grown, grown. Um, I'm watching. <laughs> so I felt weird asking kids, so I had this idea of an adult double dutch class. And I told him how good I was at double dutch, because I'm a world champion at double dutch. I told him I did street jumping. Mm-hmm. I'm a world champion. I told him I'm really good, but everyone from New York says everyone really good. says it. So he was like, okay, you good like everybody else is really good. <laughs> so at an event, he saw how um how well I did at teaching people. And so he was like, Oh, I didn't know you were like that, that good. good. Mm-hmm. So then he was like, Oh, you need to start your class like ASAP. And so a week later, we started a class. class. Wow. Well, so so did you guys meet, and you forgive me if I just missed this, but did you guys meet as a result of Double Dutch? Or, oh, so no, he, he no. was my boyfriend at the time. He actually didn't uh, know how to jump Double Dutch, how to, none of that stuff. 
So he learned everything. It was his idea to turn it into a business. We actually met because he made a movie. Remember, I was a theater major. I was bartending. He made a movie, and he was selling the movie um, at the place where I was bartending. There was an event. And so he... She, she noticed me from across the... Can I, can I finish this? <laughs> no, I'm, 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 she noticed me from across the room. She said, come on over here, good sir. I said, <laughs> no, no. Said, so my, my best friend and I, we made a film together, and we both had on the same shirts. And she said, you know, what is, you know, what does your shirt say? say? Because she felt it was kind of weird that two grown men had on the matching same shirt. matching shirt. <laughs> you know, that happens. You know, <laughs> maybe we get the same job. Um, but so we had that we had the title of our movie on the shirt. And the irony of the uh, of the whole thing is the name of the movie was called This Thing Called Love. Now, here's the thing. He asked me to buy the movie. Yeah. He said, don't spend money at work because it's kind of productive. She was the bartender. I was the bartender. Uh -huh. so Cool. I'll give you the movie. Just tell me because what we, what yeah, we would, how you what, feel about yeah. This. So what we would do sometimes is you know if some people couldn't really afford it, we'd go. You know what? Here's the movie. If you like it, give us a call back. So I said the same thing for sure. I don't want her to think that it was anything more than that. So I, I, I thought she was cute though. So um, so I gave her a copy of the movie. Yeah. And she watched the movie. And you know something about when she said she was gonna call me, I knew she was. You could just you could just tell Michelle is very if she says it, she's going to do it. And I knew it that day. She called me that day. Yeah, the next day. The next day, and we been talking ever every since. day ever since. I, I really thought the movie was great. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is a good movie. What's it was him movie? and his friends. So I mean, the movie. So point is, we didn't meet during Double Dutch. No, we were boyfriend and girlfriend. We met. We met like six years prior, right? Was it really? Six years? Great. No, not six years. We got married after. Sean, don't, don't, don't say no numbers now. Don't, don't say no numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a nine, ten, eleven, twelve, three years later. Three years later. Sorry. Three years later. It was three years because later. We, we got together in 09. Yep. We got together January 1st, 09. So yep. we made it official. Official. Um, oh. So we met in August of right. old. Yep. No. And we oh, celebrated an anniversary. At well, the latest anniversary. Well, well, August 11. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. Coming up. Yeah. I'm kidding myself. It must be old age. <laughs> so, August 11th is our wedding anniversary, but we still celebrate our girlfriend and boyfriend anniversary, anniversary in January, January 1st. Y'all yes. are the sweetest. <laughs> <laughs> we live as we alive. We're just alive. Well, look, tell me this because your energy is magnetic. You know, I can feel you all through the screen when I watch your videos on, on Instagram and Facebook. I feel like I'm right there with you guys. What's the key to your success? What's the key to this? Love. Oh. Yeah. We do, we do, we do everything tastes better, everything feels better with love. And I think that's, we were just talking about that today, right? Uh -huh. Like, that's, that's the biggest, that's the biggest ingredient. To everything that we do, our classes, um, the way we interact with our friends, our family, the way we are with each other, that's that's what it is. I mean, for me, what do you think? No, I think it is love. In fact, you know, um, you just were mentioning the birthday gifts that he got me. Yeah. And we always talk about this because, you know, even I've got him good gifts, he's got me good gifts. And people are like, well, how do you start? You guys are amazing gift givers. But we laugh because we'll be like, I've never been so inspired to do something right. for someone that much. Right. So not that, I don't feel like I'm, um, like if you talk to other people, they're gonna say, Michelle is the best gift giver in the world. Uh -huh. It's because of love that I'm inspired to right. want to do something to make him smile. Mm -hmm. So it's not that I'm a good gift giver, it's that I love him. Right. And so that caused me to be a good gift giver, if that makes sense. That's what I would say. Yeah. That's what I say. <laughs> and it sounds like you all have your love language for each other down to a science. And that's so important because, you know, the way I express is totally different from the way you know, my mom or my sister or my whoever expresses love. So that's that's certainly a, a feather in y'all's cap. And I appreciate the example. Um, now let's get back to Double Dutch. Mm -hmm. You you had mentioned that you hadn't done uh, forgive me, but you said you hadn't done a class in a while or uh, what is in about three years. You said you hadn't done this particular thing. So, so yeah, double dutch was like we said we started the class a week later after I told him the idea, mm -hmm. and so after we started the class, 
it was growing. It was, and at first, what, what happened was when he said, let's turn it into a business, that's when I had to teach him everything. Mm-hmm. And he loved everything and was like, let's do, you know, he had the ideas um, entrepreneur wise on what to do in terms of turning it into a profitable, a profitable business. So while we were having classes in New York, we got engaged, then we got married, and we wanted to leave Move. New York. Mm-hmm. So our audience were like, was like, what do you mean? What do you mean you're leaving? Right. You can't like leave class here. We, yeah, congratulations. Yeah, but well, what, what, yeah. <laughs> and so that we uh, created a certification weekend where we certify teachers to mm-hmm. teach our specific program because it's not just jump in in the street no. it's actually a 60 minute formatted aerobics class mm-hmm. and so we train the teachers to teach anyone in less than a minute mm-hmm. and what's so good about certification weekend is i'm coming from a perspective of jumping since i was four years old mm-hmm. right he's coming from a perspective of learning almost i guess newly not jumping since he was a child right so he, our perspectives on teaching are so good because no matter where you come from, we have, we can, we have, it, yeah. we have a relationship. Right. So he knows how to relate to people who haven't been jumping their whole life. Because she, she doesn't even remember not knowing how to jump. Yeah. She, uh, doesn't, she, doesn't, she doesn't know. She doesn't yeah. know. And we have street yeah. jumpers who have jumped, like, you know, from the playground. They have a whole different, I know how to change their viewpoint. Right. And he knows mm-hmm. how to um, teach people who've never even touched a rope from his perspective. Right. So it's a very good uh, good, balance, good, balance, good, yeah. good balance. And we've been yeah. teachers every year since, except when I had the little humans, mm-hmm. I took a little, <laughs> we took a- uh, that, that, That's a good reason. That's a good that's reason. For sure. <laughs> we took a break and we got it back this year. I mean, we were, we were, we sold were going. Out. We sold out. And wow. so we're still having it. Very quickly too. Very quickly. It was like, mm-hmm. oh. so very quick. Yes, so certification weekend was sold out, and now we have to um, postpone it. But everyone yeah. is committed. And once you know the world comes back to normal, we are we're back at it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like because you all teach from your uh, respective perspectives, it's it's scientific almost. You know, you can you can catch this in one person, you can catch this in another person, and it just becomes this this scientific. Sure, <laughs> you know, right. to jump the rope. That's awesome. Right. Which, which is why, you know, when you take out class, if you if you could physically jump up and down, we could teach anybody on the planet how to jump double that. Anybody. So outside of our classes, we, we are hired to do like Essence Fest, where there's like a million people or, you know, big events like that. Because Curl if, Fest. Curl Fest, because if there's a million people there, a million people will be jumping. Serious. Because we're able to teach based on what we know. Yeah. yeah. Anybody in less than Anybody one minute. Less than and we're not exaggerating. I mean, literally a minute. Like some some people, five. 10 seconds, yeah. five seconds, 30 seconds, 20 yeah. seconds, yeah. Well, look, I'm, I'm going to hold y'all to it because I haven't come to a class. <laughs> My friend keeps telling me, Paulette, you need to go, you need to go, but I have this problem, y'all. <laughs> it's oh, me If you have a knee problem, you, you pro- knee or, you know, back issues, yes. ankle issues, it probably wouldn't be good to take the class. But, but if you can physically, it, like, do a single jump rope for 10 yeah, jumps. I do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, I'm going to come. Well, once the world gets a little better, I will come to the class. <laughs> well, well, guess what? We're going to be here. We're yes. going <laughs> sure. Oh goodness. So look, um, so you you started this business, you're thriving in this business. Um, what's the next what's what's the next venture? Well, I guess that's Tuesday. That's Tuesday, so I'll hold that question. I'll hold that question. But um we're announcing it. Well, I can't wait. And I'm if you don't mind, I'll announce it here too. Um, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so health and wellness is, you know, definitely up your alley. How did how did that journey begin? Because I know you got vegan. Um, you have this wonderful holistic lifestyle. What was the impetus? What started that whole thing? So, in terms of going vegan, it's such an interesting uh, yeah. journey. So, I watched a movie called Vegucated. Vegucated. I also got thank you. Yeah, I, I watched a movie called Vegucated on Netflix and. I was like, you know what? I want to do like 30 days. Well, mind you, I can't, he can't come in the house and I'd be like, yo, let's go vegan for 30 days. And he's going to say, oh, sure. You know, right. it doesn't work that way. So when he came home, I was like, good, you want to watch this movie? Let's watch this movie. Go, mm-hmm. So after he watched it, 
he turned to me and was, I was like, like, yo. I was like, you know what you do like 10 days? What do you do like 10 days? Like it was his idea, and, and, right? Like, let's do like 10 days uh -huh. and see how this works. But you know, like prior to that, like, so a couple of years before, we, uh, Michelle and I, we were cooking um, Thanksgiving dinner. Look, she's still mm -hmm. And we were cleaning the turkey in the sink. Mm -hmm. And literally, I like screamed because it, for, for the first time, it looked like a dead bird. Yeah. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm eating this. Didn't I do that? And I ran out of the kitchen. I was like, I don't know. I don't know if I can eat that. Yeah. And that was like years before we did this. So yeah. that when we saw this fast forward, when we saw the, the movie, yeah. Vegetated, it all, it all, it all clicked. It all made sense. I was like, you know what? We should try. That. And I was so excited because I wanted to ask, I wanted right. both of us to do it, but I didn't want to, you know, just like put that on him. So when he asked to do it, I was like, yes, what a great idea. Let's do 30 days. So we're so crazy. We went to like Waffle Chinese House. Pasta. We went to Waffle House uh, mm -hmm. the day before. Uh -huh. We had the Waffle House was fun. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Pancakes for two dollars. Waffles, <laughs> pork chops, two dollars. Two dollars. So we went there the day before right. the vegan challenge. Was this was supposed to be thirty days, and then we started. Now, mind you, this was in April. I had bad allergies to the point where I had to go to the doctor. I had an allergy infection. She literally, she literally was coughing in the night all time. day, all through the night, it was literally bad. nonstop. Because your brain is piling in the egg. Yeah. Like it's insane oh, it here. Yeah. It was awful. And so, Ooh. like three days into the vegan challenge, like three, four days, so I was like, "Sure, you're not. You're not you're coughing. Not coughing no more. What happened? And I was like, "Oh, snap, I ain't coughing no more." And then I kept, and then I started to see that people said that, like people said, "Oh, going vegan fix my allergies." Because I was looking like, right, oh, like it literally. Did the wow. change? You're like, what the Nothing heck? Nothing changed. Not three days. So Sean also used I, to. So so I'm sorry. No, it's good. So I used to have knee problems for 20 years, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that it was from playing sports. You know, I was like, oh, that's probably you know what he happened. Has bad knees. To have bad knees. Yeah. Maybe 10 days in. My knees literally stopped hurting. Like, literally like a magic trick. Yes, like a magic trick, I swear. I can't even, that's the best I could do. It just stopped. That's the wow. best way I can explain it. And for, for me, you know, we teach double dose aerobics, you know, every day. Mm -hmm. So for me, like, when I was used to jumping and preparing myself to land right so that I wouldn't hurt my knees. And so even after my knees stopped hurting, I would still land, you know, you know, just so that, you know, I wouldn't hurt myself. Like, right. It doesn't hurt anymore. Wow. You haven't had knee problems in, what, five years? Five years. Now, really? here's crazy about that. We looked at it because we knew all of this stuff was happening. It was perfect. And it was like, God damn, you can't even lie no more. You can't. It works. Like, you can't. Like, we looked at each other and was like, It's hey, working. We feel better. And we know it. <laughs> then we were going to let go of the Waffle House. Are we <laughs> Decision, it. and we were like, "Yeah, we got wow. to let it sugar. We yeah. we got to go." Yeah, and so continued. Yeah. And yeah. then, then, um, in terms of pregnancy, I was suffering from infertility. Mm -hmm. So the vegan thing came even way before. We weren't before, even. Yeah. It was before we weren't thinking about veganism in terms of helping. Uh, pregnancy. The, yeah, helping yeah. pregnancy. We didn't relate the two. Right. So then I found out I had fibroids. Right. And doctors told me I could only get a myomectomy. And then I suffered from two miscarriages. Mm -hmm. And then I learned um, that veganism can actually help uh, mm -hmm. not grow fibroids anymore. Mm -hmm. and so when the doctors told me I could only get a, a dumb myomectomy, of course, that devastated me. We are entrepreneurs. It was going to come up to $30,000 for surgery. And I was like, let me, let me look on YouTube. Let me go okay. to YouTube. <laughs> they were going to have to, um, if I got an abdominal myomectomy, I was only going to be able to have a C-section birth. Mm -hmm. Now, my goal originally was five kids. And mm -hmm. I know that you're limited on C-sections. Mm -hmm. Like, they tell you that a max you should have is three. Right. So that, like, I was like, oh, no, I got to let go of my dream. I, that scared mm -hmm. me. Went mm -hmm. to the YouTube school. I learned about water fasting and juice fasting. And I did two thirty juice cleanses, a water fast. My boy fell out in the toilet. Really, Michelle? Uh huh. 
Long story short, I, I went and got it. it. Took a picture. During a water fast, it was a 17-day water fast, <laughs> the fibroids fell out in the toilet sure on did. day eight. Sure did. I was screaming. I was like, oh. I it, up. it was I was like, what the heck? She was like, shut up. And I was like, what happened? Yeah. Like, look, I'm going to the toilet. Yeah. I heard the thing, but you don't think it's going to happen to you. So no. I looked in the toilet, and I was like, wait, I can't rest. I was like, hold on. Let me I get some. I'm going to, I don't. Let me get it. Let's get this. He picked up the toilet. <laughs> yes. Took picture of, pictures of it. Yep. And I did not have to get an abdominal. Wow. 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 My kids, I ended up doing uh, water bursts. And Sean pulled uh, Sean Jr. out. Oh my God! You t- look. If if there is ever an award for the best call in America, I, <laughs> <laughs> I really am. Oh, you know, and that's such an inspiring story for women around the world. Yes. You know, yes. you don't have to do what the doctor says all the time. There are healthy, more holistic um, tools. And that's just your food, you know? Yes. Food. And I'm not get surgery in any way. What mm-hmm. I what had my feelings so much about the journey was the limits that they put on me. That they yeah. told me my only option right. was yeah. do it their way. That's mm-hmm. what I, I didn't like that limiting, you know, that limiting. Yeah, they're, they're, they're options. Yeah. You, you have tons of options. You just don't listen to the doctor. The doctor is only one. One option. One option. That's and right. that's why I mean, we need to know every option right. so that we have choices yes. on what we want to do that's yes. best for our circumstance, mm-hmm. our life, for what we want to do. We need options. And that's why I even, I have a book that I sell by my fibroids and I've been helping women there, um, there as well. What wow. is the way people being, are doing it? And you have two beautiful gifts now to show for that, you know, yes. for your effort. And and it's it's so inspiring, Nishan. You, you know, you have issues. Maybe I need to go and go vegan so my knees not hurt. Oh, <laughs> I always say so on a thirty day challenge. I I, 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 I dare you do thirty days. Just thirty days. Watch what will happen. It'll Let me tell you. <laughs> Let me tell you when I saw that when I saw your um I think you did a thirty day challenge on Instagram. Or you yeah, did a challenge or a smoothie challenge or something on, on social media. And I thought, oh, I don't need to do that. I want to do it. I want to do it. I want to do it. You know, I talked myself out of that because I was just so scared I couldn't commit. <laughs> but, but just try it anyway. Try that's, it. that's what we always say. Just, just go for it anyway. And what we do, too, to pump ourselves up is we watch the movie for Juice and we watch the movie called Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you watch somebody who's 60 days. Um, oh my God! It's they literally have. It's a documentary of different people doing the juices, so you're gonna find yourself in there. You I know mean, what I mean. What also helps us and helps everyone else is that when we do our juice cleanse, we go on Instagram and then we do it with a whole group of people. Yes. So everybody's kind of responsible for each other. Yeah. So it's almost like you don't want to kind of let the other person down. So you have a, like an account of accountability partner mm-hmm. times 50. Right. Because there's so many people doing the cleanse with you. So you don't feel alone. And even so that you don't feel alone. And everybody's kind of going through what you're going through. You know, you might feel hungry. You might feel whatever. But you commit it. You commit it. You get yeah. through it. That's it. Yeah. And the other thing that stands out about juicing is we had doctors tell us when we were trying to fix our um, infertility that they were completely against juicing. They were completely Yeah, well, you know, I'm not surprised. You know. right. And I was like, I would rather you just say, I can't speak on that than to oppose it. They don't want you, you to take money out of their pockets. Yeah. Well, you know, at the end of the day, it's still about that mighty greenback. That's what you it's know, about. If you drink some juice, <laughs> that's going to touch their pockets. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Truly, truly, truly. Well, what, what I like to do is certainly get questions from the audience because we're going to come back to this juicing and the holistic wellness lifestyle, but I want to come uh, and answer some questions from the audience. Uh, let's see. What is your, oh dear, what is your advice to the el- to the elderly who are unable to exercise during this pandemic? Um, and, and is there an age limit would you recommend for double dutch? It's not an age limit. It's definitely what your body can handle. Yes. But in terms of people who are elderly in terms of exercising, I say you do everything. Yeah. Like, for in terms of exercising, mm-hmm. uh, period. So mm-hmm. just stay active in, in terms of that. Like, 
I right? You, I think I think I think. If, oh, so if the question is the elderly, who, you mean who are physically who physically can't work out? Right. So so those. So, so those who are uh, unable to get out and go to the gym and, and do those types of normal exercises that they're so used to doing, what's your right. advice to, to that group to stay well, healthy during the pandemic? I, well, I think you would have to focus more on what you eat. Then. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can't physically work out like you used to, but you could direct all of your attention on what you put inside of your body. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to get the nutrients that you need, the smoothies in the morning, the juices in the morning, the healthy foods in the morning. If you're not physically able, then I, I think you should focus more on what you eat. And, and then try that, to, we'll you to be more physically able yes. what you can do. Right. So, so, if you, no, 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 I'm so you can physically stretch. Then That's what I was going to say. Yes. That's right. Then, um, YouTube a yoga video yes. and do a 20 minute one, and then that leads you to a 20 minute one. Then that mm -hmm. leads you to, so consistency is key in right. the, all aspects of life. Right. So the more you do, the more you'll be able to do. I appreciate that because a lot of times that I, you know, I'm telling them myself, I love to swim, but I'm not swimming right now because you know I just don't have enough information about swimming in the water and COVID and all that. So I've opted to pivot, if you will. So I want to, but a lot of times people get so discouraged because they're not able to do what they're used to doing. Right. They find excuses like I did to to not do it all, you know, because you can't do what you want to do. You know? Right, and we were put in that position because. We never worked out in our house because we have carpet. Right. And Sean was like, you can do your sweaty stuff on the carpet. But well, we mm -hmm. had to do it as well. Yeah. And so what we did was we bought extra yoga mats. And mm -hmm. so we cover the carpet and we do beach body. You know, we do something to stay active. Well, I go right outside. Yeah. I go right outside of my house and do yeah. like, you know, minutes of jump roll. We turn with the kids. We have some sit yeah. 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 I mean, you, 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 you know, I'm, I think, I think what, it, it, it is hard to make the adjustment. I think the focus has to be on why you want to stay in shape in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I know that for me, my, my own personal thing is, you know, I had, you know, I had children late in life. So for me, in my mind, I have to stay, I have to stay in shape. I have to eat right so that I'm around for my family. Right. Um, my, so my, my, my why is big enough, right? So that's my point. So even though there's a pandemic, and we can't, we can't, we were just talking about it today. We 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 have this gym that we go to that we can't go to. Them. We love going to. Them. Yeah. You know, we were in the flow actually before yeah. the pandemic. Mm -hmm. We were in the flow. We were going, and then of course the pandemic shut everything down. But my my point is the reason why we made an adjustment, the reason why we go outside and work out, the reason why we got a yoga mat. To, to work out inside is that is because we still have that why we still have that purpose mm -hmm. and the purpose for me is to stay in shape mm -hmm. so that I can be around with my family that's more yeah. important right exactly and, and and family is critical and I can tell that in in your journey and I, it's beautiful and I want to come back after this question to talk about how you incorporate your children in your business but before before we go to there um, there's a question from the audience. Uh, about your juicing and and when do you plan on doing another juicing? When is the next one? We want to know. Probably we usually actually we start doing around uh, September October. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. That's usually the, the time we do it. So the goal is usually to do one every change of season. Yes. So mm -hmm. I do one in July because the pandemic got the best of me too, and it was a little extra game stuff around my body. I did a small one. Yeah, I, did about, I did a five day. I did a ten uh -huh. day. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, so the goal is to do for me to do a five or a ten day at least every three months. Right. So September, October, the season um, starts to change, and so um, yeah, probably October when we did the last day of ages. Yes. So mm -hmm. around September, October, we'll probably be doing the next one. Uh, and then, we'll announce it, which is double dutch roll. <laughs> and now, what are some of the ingredients that you like to use, especially for somebody who's juicing for the first time? What are what what is the go to juice in your opinion? Oh, well, that's a tough one. Wait a minute, yeah. <laughs> man. Yeah. 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 All right, so and we have a, a, a jump and juice book too. So we 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 yeah, like she said. So yeah. I might go with oh, I got I, I might go with this, my favorite fruit. Um. 
apples and pineapples, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm always gonna do a pineapple, apple, and mint leaf. Uh-huh. Pineapple, pineapple, apple, and what else? Mint leaf. Mint. Oh, okay. Mint. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Delicious. Really? Delicious. It is delicious. <laughs> so when 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 should you start incorporating your greens? Or or does is that for another like oh, you no, it's, it's so it's, I switch it. I switch it up. I mean, because we do thirty day juice cleanses, so okay, we switch it up. Sometimes our juice doesn't consist of greens at all. Sometimes it does. Most times we we use kale most uh-huh. of the time. So okay. yeah, go ahead. but also here's the thing: is people also almost trick themselves out of juice cleansing because yeah. sometimes. So when we do juice cleansing, we're only juicing, so there's no food, there's no gum, there's no mint. So uh-huh. what we tell people is. Don't focus on doing a collard green wheat grass because you're gonna quit. You better spice it up. Your your goal, your goal truly, because also juicing is very healing for the body. Yes, it's about what you're not eating. So you have to remember that I, I'm a person that heals from a water fast. Mm -hmm. So that there's green, there's no nothing. It's just water. Right. Mm -hmm. So your goal of a juice cleanse is to stick to juicing, meaning I don't care if you had apple juice every day. For the yeah. 10 days. It's perfect. Your goal is stick to juicing. Do not break it. Do not cheat with any food. Right. Make sure your juice tastes good. Yeah. Make sure it tastes good. It is about satisfying those taste buds because yeah. the healing and the lo- the loss of weight and the reju- you know, the restarting of your taste buds is from what you're not eating. Mm-hmm. So don't don't like concentrate on wait, I need to have time green. No, no. Yeah, yeah. you're doing too much. Yeah. Commit to one thing. And that is to juice. Gosh, and not eat for that. You know, you just said chills up my spine because committing to one thing seems so hard. You know, especially when you when you're uh, frazzled. <laughs> um, but it's so true. If you can commit to one thing, you can do many. You know, but right now, focus on on what's in front of you. So that, yeah. that's good advice. That's good advice. Now, how do you teach this lifestyle? To your babies, they're with you. Oh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't even know they're in a lifestyle. They're just like Give me the, 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 the same rules apply. Yeah. Whatever yeah. you eat, you eat. <laughs> no, I mean, they don't. They, I mean, they've been vegan all of their lives. They don't. They have no idea what they're missing. You yeah. know, and it, it's true. Whatever we eat, and they eat, and we we make it. We would make it good for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, because it's juice. I mean, yeah. all kids love juice. They love juice. And juiced juice tastes delicious. 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 And the problem sometimes when we're juicing is I'm just like, no, this is my food. You can't have no more. They, they, <laughs> they take the juice from us. Like, you don't see how they are not eating. Like, yeah. the juice could be kale. It could yeah. be, you know, what, what, whatever you want in there. The dandelion, yeah. apple, pineapple, doesn't matter. If you're drinking it, they're gonna drink it. Yeah. And it's a yeah. good way to actually because they they're actually teaching us what they like and don't like. Yeah. They show us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're not mm-hmm. eating their stuff. And mm-hmm. so our way as parents to make sure that they're getting um the nutrients in their bodies is through juicing. Right. Because sometimes my son ain't he's not gonna eat the kale. He's not gonna eat it. You can buy, you can do whatever you want, he's not gonna eat it. And yeah. so the easiest way is to put it in a juice and he's going to Drink mm-hmm. the yeah. All so the way to get, Most kids to get, are. Yeah, to get the nutrients in their bodies because sometimes they're not going to eat what yes. they don't like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're so, they they have this glow about them, just so healthy and vibrant. How, how are they a part of your business? What, what do you do to incorporate them in the business? So, you know what's funny? And I'll say this. When Sean Jr. and Phoenix, there were times where I cried because I was like, we're not getting enough work done. They're, oh my goodness. I can't, oh, we're, we're going to fall down. We're going to like drown. This is too much. And right when you're having that moment, <laughs> yeah. it's like Phoenix end up, because we, you know, we bring our kids to work with us. Mm-hmm. Um, Phoenix, for one of them, ended up turning while we were at work. And so somebody recorded it and it ended up going viral. She got us on the Wendy Williams sure show. Did. And then it ended up getting us more business. Yeah. And it, I'm just laughing because you learn that children don't get in the way of anything. Right. They actually bring blessings mm-hmm. to your life. They bring prosperity. So mm-hmm. the way my perspective, I used to be a little scared. It's like, oh no, you know. Mm-hmm. But each child that we've had, we've only grown. 
Yes. So they're not ever in the way. And it's not like we write them in, so we're going to make them a part of the business. Uh -huh. They just become a part yes. of your life. And so mm -hmm. because we do double dutch aerobics, they have come in. Yes. So it's not like I wrote it. I thought I was scared to have children because of our lives. Mm -hmm. And what I'm learning is that, no, they, they're in here. Yes. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. They they helped our business grow wonder, Sean Jr. I mean, they, they, yeah, they, they yeah. actually helped us. You, you know, just just from the beginning, you know, when you know when we were having kids, <clears throat> I told Michelle, I said, our kids are going to come with us everywhere. Mm -hmm. If somebody wants to book double Dutch aerobics, our children have to come with us. Did I say that? He did. Because, and I was like, you can't bring kids. No, no. Because, because they they are a part of us. They are going to learn from us. They, I feel like our children must, they have to be involved so that they can see how hard their parents work right. mm -hmm. so that it could, so that they can see it, it could rub off on them and then they can in turn do the same thing. Right. So, you know, our children have been turning, so our daughter's been turning since she was eight months yeah. and, our, and our son has been turning yeah. since he was 11 months. Yeah. And actually, we would do, we were um, on a news station in D.C., and there was a, a, a there was somebody that was supposed to turn with us on television. She couldn't come anymore. She nope. she had to do something. Day of. So guess who we had to get? <laughs> Lashawn. <laughs> My son. Ever since he was a baby, when 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 we every time we do television, he is. I mean, he locks in. Remarkable. Remarkable. I mean, five months, six months, seven months. I used to carry him on me and do the news and do the news, and he wouldn't say. One word. Not one word. So he's been, he's been doing it for a long time, yeah. right? And so it's a you, pro, right? So pro. so the young lady didn't show up. Our son steps in, starts turning. We get to do our tricks. We get to do the interview. It went smoothly. He didn't and, make a peek. And they stopped listening to us because they were blown away yes. at this <laughs> two year old. He was two, right? Just mm -hmm. turning. And so and my this was even more funny. Right. We said it was in D.C. We drove from Atlanta to DC. Wow. He was sleeping while we were in the car. So I was like, you're gonna be cranky. We ain't getting enough sleep. Oh my goodness. He got up for the segment and then fell asleep right after, after the segment. I was like, oh, boy. <laughs> that, boy, that boy is clutch. That boy is clutch. I don't know what you're talking about. He should he said I have a show to do. <laughs> but literally though, literally, right? <laughs> you can have two kids. It's funny because you know, we fought for two years to have children. And, you know, God's plan is always better than your own. The mm -hmm. plan was to have one baby at first. That was like, mm -hmm. you know, we fighting to have a baby. That's right. And then when Sean Jr. was five months, I said, well, something's missing. The <laughs> point <laughs> is, and then, like, Phoenix came, and it just made me laugh so hard because, mm -hmm. remember, we were trying every month. I'm looking at the calendar. Yes. I'm doing this, doing yes. this. And then uh, we got a baby. And then the noise. Back to back. Man. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're funny. That was funny. <laughs> and so it, it was just, yes. it was just a blessing, like a double blessing yes. came, and it was so unexpected because mm -hmm. we had bought, you know, to be here for one. For one. And now so, we have two. Now we have two. There's there's a beautiful plan for them. <laughs> they had to come here to fulfill that plan. Yeah. And Y'all yeah. are just observers, you know. Y'all just observing, guiding, of course, but observing the goodness that's going to unfold. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. Um, there's another question from the audience. Uh, you guys are very competitive. How are you able to separate? How are you able to separate uh, this? Uh, how are you able to separate the competitiveness in your marriage and your business? And in Lord, I tell you, I, I, my eyes are bad. So basically, how are you able to separate your competitiveness in your marriage and in your business? Oh, we're, we're not on the same we're, we're, Yeah, we're not competitive. I mean, we, we think in abundance. Yes. You know, so yeah, we, we're not competitive at, at, at all. There's, 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 a, there's enough space for everyone. For everyone. For everyone. For so everybody. yeah, I, 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 not ever would I compete with my wife. I would only... Have my wife wife's back and yeah. and and push her through. We're on the same team. That's my, my wife. That's <laughs> <laughs> um, what's been your most memorable double Dutch experience? Ooh, wait a minute. Hold it's on. so funny to put the two. Is it double? I, oh, what's yours? Double Dutch experience. 
Oh man. I, I have I one, know. but I put it together. Go ahead. Let me I, I gotta think about that. No, so, but it's but it's with it's with life together. So I would say we um this was we got booked for Essence Fest for our first mm -hmm. time. Oh yeah. And um, it was such a remarkable weekend. I mean, I when I'm telling you, everything kept flowing. Everything Diddy was, worked. Diddy was there. Uh, we bad boy fans for life, you know. <laughs> and <laughs> one of our friends, we didn't have tickets for any of the shows. Um, one of our friends ended up um, bumping into us there and was like, I got extra tickets because they, they deal with a famous person and their manager. And they was like, she got to leave out of town. Do so y'all want the tickets? I mean, these were front row. And we were like, Yes. <laughs> that, that, that sounds good. Thank that sounds you. fantastic. And then one of my other friends gave us tickets to Mariah Carey was the first night. Yes. So we got tickets to that. And then we jumped. Who did we get jumping that year? We got Dougie Fresh on stage yes. on the main stage. We got yes. him jumping. We got um oh, what's his name's wife? Uh, oh, um the comedian. The comedian. Um J JB Smooth. JB Smooth. Um we got them jumping. Shop. We got, Shop. Yeah. Wow. We got we were on the main essence stage. Yes. And even after our session was over with the person who booked us, play like a girl, mm -hmm. um, they ended up having us come on the stage again the next day. Right. And the people who hosted us, play like a girl, had to leave early. So they gave us their hotel room. Wow. <laughs> I mean everything then, was look, just this is icing on the cake. My period was late, got a pregnancy test in the hotel room, and found out we were officially pregnant for the first time. With Sean, Sean Jr. Jr. Oh, wow. That is so beautiful. Wow. That is so beautiful. Everything. And we've been booked for Essence Fest. We missed one year. We missed one year. And then we're booked every, every, every year. year. Awesome. Wow. You know, when you, when you were sharing that story, the immediate thought was, when you're walking in your purpose, all of God's blessings flow to you. When you're walking in your purpose, and in obedience, all of these blessings will flow to to you, and it, it just seems like you all are a walking book of blessings materialized, and that's that's very inspiring, very inspiring. Um, a couple more questions, and then we'll go on and go because I know the babies. They, they, you said that they were in the in the room on their digital. Yeah, I mean, that's what on camera, but <laughs> look, they might be strategizing. <laughs> I'm sorry. What does self care? So you all are, you know, your best friends, your best buds, um, and and in a marriage, you both have to bring your A game and sometimes your C game, and you build each other up. So what does self care separate from you know the, the union look like for you? So Sean, how do you self care? How do you maintain and, and stay focused and all that? And Michelle, what does self care look like for you? Well, I was asking you, Sean and Michelle. Well, self care for me is I don't know, it's, it's, it's the simple stuff. Uh, for me, I like to. I have a studio in my house, so sometimes I'll just go in the studio and sit in the dark and play the piano and just think and just focus. Like that's 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 big for me. You know, I do that, and then like I said, I listen to a lot of inspirational speakers. Like I love to do that because it gets my it gets my mind gets my mind working. Right. Um. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's pretty much what I do by myself. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I might go to the to the gun range every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <Maybe it's> not. <laughs> no, no, no. But yeah, like you know, stuff like that. Just I like to. I like to. I like to think a lot. I mm -hmm. do. I just sit. Think, reflect, focus. You know what's what's next. What are we doing next? You know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's that's what, yeah, that's my. And Michelle, what about you? Yeah, my self care is uh, like I did a group meditation with uh, people, and then I led group meditation. So mm -hmm. um, that's that's my self care. I'm also with my my girlfriend sometimes. I uh, live in New York, so I may zoom with them. We may have a whole zoom um, conference, and Sean is nice enough to just. Let me be up here for a couple of hours, like I went away somewhere or something. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. Out with my girlfriends, or um, the stuff for me is really reading and journaling and um, mm -hmm. meditation for myself. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All good things to keep you centered, you know, um, and COVID or not, we, we have to create these rituals for ourselves so that we can stay in tune with spirit, stay in tune with ourselves. Uh, so we'll know what the next step needs to be. Um, and so kind of in closing, because I, I have some kind of fun questions I want to ask you as we say goodbye to the audience. But before I do that, um, <clears throat> you're juggling so much. You're juggling so much. Is there ever a time when you just, no, I don't want to ask that question. I don't want to, the question I want to ask, did you ever imagine double Dutch aerobics would be where it is now? Yes. Yes, 100%. Yeah. It's, it's, it's actually still not where I think it could be. Mm -hmm. You know, you know when, I, when we, I call us the, the billion dollar brand, I honestly feel like we can get there. You know, so yes, I, I do. I, I am. I, I saw. I saw us being here. That's why I got so excited when she came up with the idea. Immediately, oh, okay. I'm. Oh my God! Do you know what we can do? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we've done yep. it. Yep. We've, we've done it up to this point. We still got more work to do, but I, I see us going so much further. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much. Wait till Tuesday. <laughs> oh gosh, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I can't wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be hounding your, 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 your keys. <laughs> they said it was Tuesday. Now they come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Well, as I mentioned at the onset, you know. I, oh, I'm sorry, Michelle. Go on. Go, go, go. Um, the way I want to answer that question is that when someone asks a question like that, it makes me go, oh, well, where are we? Like um, I know. I think is so admirable you, you of course you know you all are successful but you don't keep it just to yourselves you're you're certifying people to do what you're doing to, to perpetuate better health and better wellness and, and just a you know a holistic lifestyle so and, and that's the, that's the key to success it's not keeping it to yourself it's sharing it and that's when more comes that's when more comes you know? yes yep yep um let's see so I'm just going through my list to make sure I got everything, but I wanted to find out. So the goal for Profiles is to certainly bring stories like you all, exceptional people doing exceptional things. Uh, I, I wanna inform the audience. I wanna inspire the audience through your stories. And I want hopefully to empower them to know that they can do what y'all are doing, You know, that they have the tools to affect change. So I wanna flip the script one more time and find out from you all what what it, what piece of information was the best advice that you received that's the first the second what inspires you and the third what has been the most empowering experience you've had and we, i can re reiterate it if you need me to so the first question what's the best piece of information in the form of advice that you've received so i think for me it would be from my guy Les Brown, who mm -hmm. I listen to all the time. Um, I mean, I don't know if he said, I mean, well, I heard it from him. So basically, the, the quote is By the yard is hard, but inch by inch, anything's a cinch. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And so, as you know, being an entrepreneur, I have to keep that in my mind mm -hmm. because it's small steps to success. And you got to do all the small things to get mm -hmm. to the bigger things. Mm -hmm. So that's the most inspirational thing that I can think of right off the top yeah. of my head. Yeah, yeah. that's good stuff. Um, we, we, 
watched, I watched so many, <laughs> I watched so many people. Um, I guess I would have to say a quote because I'm trying to think of advice, but a quote that constantly plays in my mind to right. just set me back on track right. is mm-hmm. that uh, worry is a misuse of the imagination. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So. Sometimes I feel like my, especially during the pandemic, yeah. I feel like my, my worry about the business, my worry about my children, my worry about, you know, I could just worry myself um, into nothingness. Because yeah. I, mean, I can use that to imagine greatness. Or I can use that to be positive because worry doesn't prepare you for anything. Worry doesn't make you better equipped. It, it just literally wastes the current moment with negativity. Mm-hmm. Like it just gives it away. You can't yeah. imagine something in place of that worry positive. Right. Mm-hmm. Like that's it. Because yeah. if I something bad is gonna happen, worrying about it didn't make it not happen. Right. Mm-hmm. So you might as well have spent that moment being happy because if that bad thing's gonna happen, okay, it's still gonna happen. Right. right. So whether you worry about it or not, right. It's a waste exactly. of energy. Waste of energy. Just waste shift of energy. That. And so in terms of business, because we're doing it on our own and we created this, no one has done this before in terms of double dutch. Mm-hmm. So the worry is truly a waste and I don't have time for it. So that really cooks me in sometimes when I'm like, oh, oh what if, oh, I mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Just go, just go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's so true. Worry can send you on a downward spiral quickly yes. and in a hurry, certainly. I've been on, look, I've been on that spiral. So I know it. I know it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It takes a lot of work. It does. Right? Because, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To worry and then to talk yourself out of doing what you know you should do. And it's like it's a lot of time, a lot of energy, a lot of work that you put into that. Right. It's almost like self therapy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Self therapy. <laughs> All right, so Sean and Michelle, the most important questions of the hour. Android or iPhone? iPhone! <laughs> <laughs> Notifications on or off? Off, uh, on. On? on. I'm not gonna ju- Look, Sean, I'm not going to judge you. <laughs> <laughs> what notifications are notifications? Okay. Uh, so yeah, the when you the little beep or the little red dot or blue dot that, that comes on your phone. Um, toilet paper up or down? I don't care. Yeah, it doesn't matter. There, I just need it there. <laughs> yeah, that's the truth, <laughs> right? That's, that's the point, right? <laughs> Almond milk or coconut milk? Almond milk. And what did you say, Michelle? Almond. Almond. Okay. Look, well, y'all get the prize of the most correct answer questions. <laughs> <laughs> Leo. Oh, goodness. Well, look, you guys, it's been a joy. I, I, I imagine this is everything I imagined. This, talking to you guys this evening is everything I imagined and hoped it would be. Um, where can people find you? What's a good website and, and a phone number for those of uh, the viewers that are in Atlanta? Yes. Yeah, so. Our website, our Instagram is Double Dutch Aerobics. If you forget everything, you can Google Double, Double Dutch, Dutch Aerobics. Aerobics. Just remember Double, Double Dutch, Dutch Aerobics. Aerobics. <laughs> uh, the phone number is 404 490 0668. If you forget it, Google Double Dutch Aerobics. Y'all need to have your own talk show. <laughs> We used to. We used to right. <laughs> you know, you two are just amazing. You truly are. I, I, I know I can said it already, but you are dynamic. And I hope and pray for every measure of success that you all desire meets you at your feet. Because you are special. You're special people. And I'm grateful to have had this opportunity to talk to you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. I, I just took that all in. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, it came from my heart. It came from my heart. See that? Um, you see the love? You see how that yep. works? Yep, 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 yep. No, no, thank you very much for that. We had an amazing time. There's no more questions? We got to go? Well, no. we don't have to. Come on, keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was really fun. We had a lot of fun. Yes. <laughs> um, 
what I want to, I think my producer is over here, my executive producer, who's my sister. Look, I keep it all in the family too. <laughs> so yeah. sure. And that's what you have to do. That's what you I, have to do. I, you know, we agree with that. Yeah, I know you do. I know you do. Um, so we're going to be looking out for the next Juice Challenge. We're going to be we'll have our eyes open and ears open for Tuesday's announcement. And anytime y'all want to come back on Profiles, look, all you have to do is send me a message, call it, and we want to come back. And my door is open. It is oh, open. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. For sure. Yep, yep. And thank you all for watching. Um, join me back next Saturday, 7 p.m., right here on Facebook for What's Under Your Mask. We all are wearing masks now, and I don't know about you, but I've had some challenges with these masks and again. And so we'll be talking to a dermatologist about what's really going on underneath the mask and some remedies and things that you correct any outbreaks that you might be having. Or just some information that you can use for your skincare routine. So that's next Saturday, 7 p.m. on Facebook. Sean and Michelle Clark, thank you. DoubleDutchAerobics.com. Um, look them up, follow them on Instagram. They are amazing. I hope you really like this. Thank you guys for watching. And in all of your doing, make sure you show a little kindness. Make sure you show a little compassion and be gentle with yourself. All right. Good night, friends. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Good night.